So that's where I saw a level of burnout where people were just like, please let the schools reopen. Please let the schools reopen. And then we transfer that level of burnout and stress onto our teachers Mm -hmm. and we see them all quitting in droves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Teachers, healthcare workers, frontline workers, the people that really were carrying the biggest load of all are leaving and I don't blame them. With girlfriends of a certain age in midlife, we got a lot to say. So let's get loud. We won't fade away because we're girlfriends of a certain age. Hey, girlfriend. Welcome to Girlfriends of a Certain Age, a podcast for women in midlife. I'm your host, Jessica Neighbor. I'm a voice coach for public speakers and vocalists at Impact Vocal Coaching. And I'm your host, Fleshe Hesh. I'm a business coach and work-life balance expert for moms. We are recovering good girls, and we are living well in midlife. Wait, Fleshe, what is a recovering good girl? Well, Jessica, it's someone who used to care way too much about what everyone else thought about her, and now she does not give a bleep anymore. (gasps) Love it. Each week, we discuss a hot topic or hot flash, including culture, relationships, and life to help you live out loud. If you identify as a recovering good girl or as a girlfriend of any age and you want to join our conversations, Join us at Instagram, YouTube, or girlfriendsofacertainage.com. Hi, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. Happy Monday. Um, Happy Monday. I'm real glad we hit record because our girlfriends were missing all kinds of good stuff. You and I started the the session, the episode, before we started the episode. So we're jumping right into it today because you and I are on fire on this topic, this idea of burnout. Big time. there was yeah. a pre-show that we were like, oh, we really should be recording this. We, we've started the episode. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> such a big topic. It, it hits home on so many levels, doesn't it? It hits home on so many levels. And one of the things that you and I are so incredibly clear about, most women are really focused on burnout around their work. But you and I came to the conclusion that all of us are burnt out on something in our lives especially after the pandemic, let's face it, this new normal or whatever we want to call it has really been challenging. Whatever was maybe working, teetering on the edge is probably not working any longer. And yes, it hits home in so many areas, Shay. It's like our relationships, our our caregiving, our work, our health, our emotional state, so many things. Yeah. And here's the thing. Humans are not wired to change. We are wired to stay the same, talk to the same people, wear the same clothes, eat the same food, drive to work the same way. We are not wired to do things differently. And so we get pulled into this level of false comfort. And the pandemic came along with its jackhammer and (laughs) broke up the concrete of everybody's consciousness Mm. in ways we needed and appreciated. And in a lot of ways, we did not and do not. And so people are trying to go back to some idea of normal when I don't, you have to kind of ask yourself, how well was everything in your life working before the pandemic? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think that there was a really rich opportunity to shine a light on so many of the things that are wrong. I think in in my case, I saw so many things that were wrong. It was overwhelming. So in some ways, I feel like I did revert to old routines just because it was like, how do I solve the world, right? (laughs) On the other hand, there were things and moments that we're going to get into in this episode where it was like, oh, no, this isn't working any longer. Pivot. Oh, no, I really do want to change this and have the tools and wherewithal, you know, to do that. But yeah, I completely agree that the pandemic just completely spun us all out. Right. And we were scared. Whether people wanted to be scared or that felt Mm -hmm. good, like, oh, no, or uh, they couldn't control it. I saw a lot of people really spinning out of control, which is 
managing their thoughts. And those of us who are parents Ugh. and we're doing all this in real time, you know. Oh my gosh. It was even worse. I have so, so many hard. people who say to me now, oh my God, whose kids are older and, and launched. I don't know how you do it. I mean, <sighs> parenting seems like a just a, a little bit of a shit show. And I'm like, yeah, it's not easy. The yeah. level of support that I find myself needing now for my friends and my family. But now I am just not afraid to ask for help and ask for the support that I need because it's all happening in real time and it's unprecedented situations Absolutely. and realities that we're dealing with and our children are dealing with. Oh, yeah. And it's funny you bring up the, the kid thing because we are selling a desk that was a pandemic desk to get the remote learning under control so that one of my sons had a, an extra bonus desk in our dining room. Oh boy. Just to try to help him focus. And I remember putting up calendars and little reminders on the wall. And I have to say that as we're like trying to get rid of this desk, where it, it I, it's, it's making me look at it and I'm getting like a PTSD feeling. And my son and I were looking at it together last night going, do you want to keep it? And he was like, mm -mm. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're going to, we're going to just let this one go. I, uh, actually, as you're bringing up that story, I love that you guys are doing some spring cleaning here as spring is hitting. Yes. It, it's really interesting timing. It feels very, very great way to take your power back. And you're at this different stage now. During the pandemic, that's probably where I saw the main source of burnout in parents who still had to work and their children were, you know, locked in the house with them and now having to be the teacher and the principal oh, yeah. and the PE teacher and the parent and the safe place to fall and the disciplinarian and then dealing with our own personal stuff that was going on. Yeah. So that's where I saw a level of burnout where people were just like, please let the schools reopen. Please let the schools reopen. And then we transfer that level of burnout and stress onto our teachers. Mm -hmm. And we see them all quitting in droves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Teachers, healthcare workers, frontline workers, the people that really were carrying the biggest load of all are leaving. And I don't blame them because they didn't have a support uh, safety net to begin with. And when the pandemic hit, it was like, where is it? And yes, there were some federal and governmental programs that came along and, you know, did help stimulus things. But the foundation, the system of teaching, the system of our healthcare is broken. And you can't fix broken by throwing a little stimulus money at it. That is the other thing that the pandemic brought up for us, how much we were hanging on by a thread, socially, emotionally, financially. And so now we find ourselves, you know, I just recently got an email from my kid's school district saying, we're no longer in pandemic crisis mode. We're mm -hmm. going to shift the way we handle these, uh, you know, people getting sick. We're going to shift the policies because it's ending. And I noticed too, the, the federal government is ending a lot of these, a lot of the policies that were in place around the pandemic. And so now here we are. We're being mm -hmm. told, okay, it's pretty much over, even though people are you know, still getting the illness. And a lot of us are getting sick with other things too, because our oh, yeah. bodies, we, we've been suppressed and hidden away. So it's been a very interesting time. And so I'm noticing a lot of burnout. And where I think five years ago, people would have been talking a lot more about burnout around their work. Now I see women talking about burnout, about their relationships. I see women burning out, of course, on their work sometimes or their businesses. Mm -hmm. I see them burning out in their health. Mm -hmm. I see them having anxiety and depression that they never had before. And they're very confused by it. Our bodies are changing. Those of us who are girlfriends of a certain age, mm -hmm. there is so much going on mm -hmm. in real time. We're flying the plane that is living our lives and we're trying to fix it. And a big thing that you and I have noticed is that. It's really, to us, about the good girl trying to ruin our lives. She's trying to go back to some old-fashioned or some old-timey version of normal. Yeah. But, you know, who you were at 20 is not who you are at 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or wherever, whatever age you are. Mm -hmm. And so you and I wanted to unpack this a little bit, getting into how the good girl is trying to ruin our lives. 
Absolutely. And how that absolutely contributes to burnout. Because if we're trying to think of the good girl as setting this impossible standard, we can never win. And I don't want to live my whole life like that. So I think the the good part of the pandemic, if we use that as a little bit of a framing, was that I think a lot of us did look at a lot of the systems and we said, hell no, no, this isn't working. This clearly isn't working for the majority of us, right? This certainly isn't working for many marginalized groups. Um, We're seeing it. We're seeing it play out. Right. Yeah. We're, we're seeing it at, in the Navajo Nation, uh, how many more people were sick from the pandemic. We're seeing it in, you know, um, the, the police brutality that was happening during the pandemic. Like, my goodness gracious, towards African-Americans. So we just saw it all over the place. And I do think that if we can claim what it is we want I'm hopeful that both individually and as a greater society, that we can make real, concrete, positive change for the better. I think a lot of it's already happening. So there are so many people, we see it. The nature of work has shifted. I'm not even going to say it's changing. It has shifted. Oh, yes, it has. A lot of employers are trying to get their employees back into the office, and they are being met with a lot of backlash. I see that happening uh, intensely. A lot of people moved away from big cities where their jobs were. Yes. And we know a lot of people quit. It was coined the, the great resignation. Yes. It is still happening. It is. People are still quitting their jobs. I just read an article over the weekend mm-hmm. that there are more people than ever working part time, like high level, you know, like software engineers, yes. doctors. I met a doctor recently and he was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I just work three days a week and I don't have a client base. I just come in and do urgent care because that's how I can make a lot of money. But I want to ski. I want to hike. Yep. I want to climb. I want to live my damn life. And I was like, wow. Part-time work, full-time life, baby. Right? That's right. That's how, where it's at. We can reassess how much do we really need to live? We see people living in their vans now, yep. van life, yep. because the level of flexibility and freedom letting go of their bigger home and all their things. They realized Mm -hmm. that didn't make me happier. Finn, my 15 year old this morning was saying that he really thinks that school should be four days a week because three day weekends really let him recover and recharge. And I said, you know what? You are right. Five days is too much for a, a worker and that's an adult. Why are we making our kids go to school five days a week? Oh, maybe because the capitalistic society wanted us all to work five days a week. So there's a whole opportunity here to look at all of it. Because I was like, you know what, Finn? You are right. I only work four days a week. And I never want to go back to working five days a week. Right? So I only work four days a week. And I take the last week of every month off. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just built in because I run my own business. You run your own business. We get to choose how and when and why we work. And And in working with you, girlfriend, you gave me that same gift. I took your same model. I was like, wait, hold on a minute. Excuse me. Wait, wait, (laughs) hold on. Will you repeat that? You work four days a week and you take the last week off. Hold your horses. And you can. You can call your own schedule. And that was actually partly what I said to Finn was I said, I know You have to play the game right now, but one day you could create your own schedule if you want it. It's true. I'm always shocked, and this is a whole other thing we should probably get into sometime, but that kids are educated the same way that you and I were. I've been pretty surprised as a parent. There's so been so little innovation in public mm-hmm. education that we still herd kids in the classrooms, pack them in 20 to f- 25 to 30 kids in the class with one teacher who is expected to bring all of them up at the same time, in the same rate, in the same place to the next level. And then there's the stair step. Life doesn't work like that. No. So why are children in the public education system, and you and I both have our kids in public education, mm-hmm. you know, I think parenting has a lot to do with the messaging that they're getting, but I love the intensity and the self-reflection and the self-awareness that your 15-year-old had about himself, yeah. that, you know, that one extra day would give me time to recharge and not burn out. I think he is experiencing a little bit of burnout. He's a freshman in a, you know, a big public high school. He's looking at the four years ahead of him and he's not too motivated right now. And it's a hard one because I 
I try to give him support. I try to give him some tools, but he is looking at something that's really hard. I mean, when I sit there and remember back to some of my school years, I definitely fought with burnout. And then let's talk about how that good girl would come into play, right? Mm. For me, I wanted to get the good grades. I wanted to be a people pleaser. And if I didn't, it was all my fault. I never looked at the system and that maybe the system wasn't designed in the first place to support me. And then I have another child with, uh, you know, learning differences. Well, let me tell you, our school system does not support that one iota. So there are, there's so many things where we are getting the messaging, especially as recovering good girls to fit, make it fit, make it work, make it work. Oh, yeah. and we're There's tired a lot of to it. be said. I mean, I, I, I th- I'm hearing the phrase in my head, bloom where you're planted. And I do think that is a life skill for us all to learn, teach our children. Let's make the most of it. Sure. But it doesn't mean make the most of it forever. It means make the most of it right now. And then let's dream up what the next thing could be. And that's where I see the good girl getting in our way. The good girl's just like, no, bloom where you're planted, bloom where you're planted. If this is good enough, I'll make do. It's yes. enough. I won't ask for more. Uh, you know, and, and not even question or even scratch the surface. What more do I need? Yes. So I want to invite our girlfriends, of course, us included, it's time to start scratching at the surface mm-hmm. and start digging when we have the time and the energy. And you may not feel like that ever comes, right? So you might need to push a little bit harder for it. I can speak to this as someone who just recently went through a big move, right? My Mm -hmm. family moved in the middle of the school year. You think I didn't get some raised eyebrows from some family (laughs) members? You're doing what, when, and you're going where? And then I stood in my power and absolutely, this is the right thing for my family. Mm -hmm. We are absolutely doing this. Mm -hmm. And there's never a good time to move. There's never a good time to pick things up. No, there's never a good time for any of that. And oh, by the way, I'm not a good girl anymore, so I don't give a bleep. Mm -hmm. We need to get up and we need to move and this needs to happen. So I had to make that choice. It's never convenient. It's never a good time to question if your marriage is working. Mm -hmm. It's never a good time to question if your work is working. It's never a good time to question any of the big things in your life, how you eat, how you move. So we, we really need to make this a priority. And stop letting our inner good girl ruining our lives. Today's episode is brought to you in part by our dear friend and girlfriend of a certain age, relationship coach Tamara Mendelssohn. We wanted you to meet Tamara because she brings a really fresh perspective to relationships that we thought you needed to know about. You can learn more about Tamara at tamaramendelssohn.com. Hi, Tamara Mendelson here, relationship coach. Relationships are hard. And I wrote the mini relationship roadmap to help you along the way in your own relationship. Tips and tricks and some exercises to help figure out if your relationship is broken or if you're just angry. So sign up for our email down below and get on our mailing list and I'll send you out this workbook right away. Talk soon. Today's episode is brought to you by Impact Vocal Coaching. Do you need to improve your public speaking skills? You can increase your confidence and skill with my new training course. It's called Impact, the essential public speaking course for your online and in-person presentations with me, voice coach Jessica Neighbor. You will improve your speaking effectiveness for your meetings, for your podcasts, and for your social gatherings with girlfriends of a certain age. I'm an international voice coach and author, and I've been teaching professionally for 20 years. You'll learn valuable speech skills in my streamlined six-step process. And listeners of Girlfriends of a Certain Age get two bonuses when you join soon. You can join the Impact Vocal Coaching course at impactvocalcoaching.com. Hope to see you inside. Stay calm and speak on. I mean, what you bring up about moving is so monumental, right? Because you're literally uprooting your family, your home, and moving it somewhere else, which 
is so terrifying to so many people, but so brave. And, you know, for you, in this case, it's a homecoming. It's coming back to the Bay Area where you're from. But wow, like kudos to you for seeing that through and getting all those, you know, messages uh, and opinions from other people and just like doubling down on what it is you know you needed and what it is you know your family needed. And that's really what I think developing this recovering good girl muscle is all about, is continuing to check in to what our purpose was, what was my big why, and not getting, you know, pulled pulled one way or another direction by what everyone else thinks about what it is we're doing. I had a similar experience, Fulche, and you know this well, uh, because we also work in a different capacity in our businesses together. You're an incredible business coach. And we know that one of my goals for a long time was to build up my online coaching empire, as I like to call it. Well, the pandemic kind of put that on a fast track. All of a sudden, my vocal students, my public speaking students weren't coming to me in person any longer. They were coming online. You better believe I got some pushback, especially from my teen families. They said, you're staying on Zoom? No! Zoom doom, I can't face this anymore. It was a really hard transition, but I knew in my bones that... A, I didn't want to, you know, endanger my family with the germs and and with all that was still happening, even though so many people wanted to say, the pandemic's over, the pandemic's over, the pandemic's over. And I also knew that this was what I was calling in. And I had to continue to check in with that. I had to continue to meet with you about it. Hold true. And guess what? The people who really understood my new purpose came along for the ride with me. But they were so incredibly committed. And it was very few people who said, uh, no thanks. And they saw the benefits that, oh, wait, we can just log on through Zoom and, and, and do these great coaching calls and get the same great thing out of it, which isn't to say that once in a while I don't have in-person gatherings, but the whole job shifted for me. And I think a lot of us can relate to that, that we moved from the meeting room to our Zoom room, that we moved from teaching in a classroom to teaching online. And it doesn't come without its, you know, challenges. I mean, my dog is my coworker. He's not the most exciting lunch conversationalist, right? I have to get more creative with how I get up and move all the time or else I am going to lose my mind sitting in front of a screen. Um, but there's there's ways that we can evolve. And then when you do that, you never want to go back. So that's a really good way to check in with what is holding us back uh, and, and what's the good stuff um, and to follow the good stuff. Follow the fun. Let those little breadcrumbs, even if we can't see the whole picture of what it's going to look like, follow your intuitive breadcrumb of good things one step at a time. So you bring up a really good point that you had some help to get you through that, right? You work with me, I'm your business coach. Yes. And so you had that and you you and I have enough trust built up that you were able to take my outstretched hand and, and pull you lovingly through it. Oh, yeah. And so I was able to help you see, well, that's a roadblock. Yeah. What, what do you want to do with that? Do you want to let it sit or do you want to push through it and see this thing through? And, and so that was a place where having the loving support provide, provided that for you. So for girlfriends, that's a clue. Where do you need help? Where are you even too terrified to even look at it? Oh, my goodness, this thing. Over, oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. what do you need? Do you need to work with a coach? Do you need to work with a therapist? Do you need to work with some kind of healer who mm -hmm. can help you feel safe enough to look at that thing that is terrifying you? Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you, Jessica and I have both shared stories now. It, it for her to shift her her build her online empire was not without its challenges or moments of like, am I doing it right? Oh, total me, self my doubt. Move, am I doing it right? Yes, right. Right. The right. self doubt. Yes, it's debilitating. It can be absolutely debilitating. And if if depending on where you are in your recovering good girl process, 
you may not have the inner strength just yet, or right. that muscle, because it's really a muscle that we build. These are skills. These are just right. simply skills that can be learned. Right. And so what do you need to learn? What skills or will help you get to the next level? Um, so whether it's fixing your relationship to your health, your body, your business, your, your, your lover, whatever is happening yeah. for you, it's time. You're at this stage of life now, and you're hearing this message for a reason. Mm -hmm. You clicked on this episode for a reason. Mm -hmm. What do you need to shift and change in your life right now? And Jessica and I are giving you so much permission, so much love, so much encouragement to set yourself free. And there's not a one way to do it, you know, so we both just shared pretty dramatic ways that we shifted what we needed to shift. There are a lot of people out there who are not in that same position, right? They can't get up and move. They can't shift their job. They could run the risk of losing their work or their home. And we see that too. So there are ways that you can shift that can absolutely be helpful to you that maybe aren't as dramatic a shift. So we do want to acknowledge too that you can do small steps and make small pivots and that those small pivots can have a real big impact, right? Whether that is just finding someone who you can talk to who will support you through the struggle if you can't get out of your current situation, whether you can't find a little bit more time to schedule a little self-care into your day every day, you know? And if you can't make it the first priority, at least make it the last. At least Mm. promise yourself that you're going to do a little something for yourself, even if it is just sitting down on that couch and having a cup of tea for a minute. So I do want to acknowledge that this is a complex situation and that it, it looks and feels different for people in different situations for sure. Absolutely. You and I are fresh from those experiences. So we're, we're fired up about it. Yes. Uh, we think about it a lot. You know, I'm still settling in with my new move. Um, you know, you've got some fun. I'm still fun building things. my online empire. <laughs> You're still building the online empire. Right. So that, that's something very big and fresh for us. So that's why we use those examples. But absolutely, not everybody can get up and move. Not everybody can quit their jobs. But what you can do is acknowledge where your inner good girl is getting in the way. And that's really where it starts, right? If we don't acknowledge a problem, we sure as heck don't have a chance anytime of fixing it. So that's mm-hmm. always the first step. Is And what I'm hearing in that cliche is that if we don't acknowledge it, the burnout's going to be worse. If we oh, yeah. just keep going, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Well, we can deny the, the reality up until a point, but it's going to manifest itself in different ways, mm-hmm. right? I remember hearing Oprah talk about this sometime. I think she was having a conversation with Maya Angelou, who I feel mm. like is one of my aunties in spirit. But Oprah was talking about getting the tap on the shoulder and ignoring it, and then getting the shove and ignoring it, and having to get the two by four across the face before it really became apparent. Mm. What Jessica and I want for you is to avoid the two by four across the face, right? It doesn't have to be that hard. I don't know why, but humans do tend to learn through challenges and difficulty. And I guess we just want to also remind you, could there be a gentler way? Could you start Mm -hmm. to listen to the stirrings of your own heart, your own soul? What, What does need to shift? Because one of the things I've noticed now that I'm 50 as I've been doing a lot more review, is this past mm. week's been really interesting, really looking mm-hmm. at my life and where I've come from and where I'm going <laughs> and, and how where I'm going is so much more exciting and feels so rich and how I'm really making peace with what's happened in the past. I, I kept thinking about these moments of bravery, moments where I, and sometimes it was really sudden, <gasps> mm. I need to make a change. Mm-hmm. Oh my, okay. Um, you know, and then what would I do normally talk to a girlfriend, then talk to seven more. And every time I would talk about it, I would get a little less fearful and reactive, and a little bit more grounded in my body, Mm -hmm. and stop feeling so emotional about it, and start thinking with my head. And so it's in those moments when I've been able to be connected with what's in my heart, but usually use my head to really lay out the next steps that's when I've been able to make more change in my life. And not to say that I do all those by myself because I have a wonderful therapist that I work with and I I get coached as well. And I have healers that I work with. 
for me, it's it's a team sport, and I know that there's a certain privilege that comes with the you know the ability to do all those things. But I want to remind everybody that we can get help that's not very expensive. Mm-hmm. And so I want to, I, I feel like I talk about this a lot, but I want to remind girlfriends, if you have a job, look into your HR department. Is there some counseling or support you could get? If you have insurance, look into that. If you live near a university, do they have students who are you know, interning as therapists who you mm-hmm. could work with on a sliding scale? I don't want cost to get in the way of you getting the support and the help and the healing that you that you need that you deserve. Absolutely. I went and used uh, a student service and he was a counselor in training and he wound up being an incredible therapist who I stayed with for nearly a decade. Uh, you know, and it was absolutely what I could afford and it we grew together. Which isn't to say that you can't switch if that's not the right person, but yeah, there's so many options. And I love that you also mentioned saying it to girlfriend after girlfriend and getting a little bit stronger. So lean on each other, lean on us, come join our community in online. We'll share a link with you because it's by saying out loud what you want your life to be like, if you put it out there and you put it out there to people that are going to hear you, we're going to check in with you about it too. We're going to, you know, on some level, hold you accountable. And I think that's why we know we need our girlfriends. And as we age, we know we need them even more because they're going to, they're going to check us in that loving friendship kind of way uh, that makes sure that we are moving in the ways that we said we wanted to, um, but doing it in a really loving way, right? Because we can't, we can't force anyone to do anything, right? That's their journey, but we sure can check in with them about it. Where are you? How are you feeling today? Oh, that thing you brought up a couple months ago, what's going on with that now? And it's like, I can hear a few people saying, like, this is where my, my psychic skills are kicking in. I can hear some of the girlfriends saying or asking us uh, through the episode, but what if I don't know what I'm burnt out on? Mm. And so I just want to plant the seed. The thing that is making you the most exhausted, the most tired and the most cranky is a good place to start. And that we, you can start to like really focus on that. And then you can reverse engineer maybe one teeny tiny step on that to get you out of that, right? Whether it's a controlling boss, you could start watching videos on YouTube, how to deal with difficult and and controlling bosses, learn scripts, learn things to say. You're not without resources and your own personal power. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing. I think that's the thing I want to leave my part on for, for our girlfriends that, you, I think you know a lot more about what's getting in the way of you living your life on purpose and with passion and joy. And to be really effective in your life, no matter, no matter how you earn your money, you can be very effective and powerful at work and in your personal life. So that is my hope and my blessing for you. And if you're needing extra support, please join our online community. Talk with us more uh, for our after our girlfriends after hours because that this is part of our mission. Jessica and I have a big, big mission to be here to support you so that all of us can heal and finally just shake off the shackles of that good girl yes. and what where she's brought us. She's brought us far. We have to have gratitude for her because she's helped us in a lot of ways. She helped mm-hmm. us survive our childhood and beyond. Mm-hmm. But now it's time for a more adult way of handling our lives. And so that's my hope and my prayer and my blessing for all of us good girls. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I'll just add on, you know, I'll I'll make a big, huge yes to everything you just said and add on to that, that, you know, recovering from being a good girl and uh, claiming what you need and really acknowledging it and then taking those small but powerful steps to get what you need is a way to build up that muscle. And then our muscle is going to get stronger with each boundary we set, with every time we speak out loud what it is we need, you know, what it is we even want or desire. That is going to re-energize us to keep going towards the thing that is the right thing for us. Because we all want a roadmap. And I know that when we're in burnout, it's terrifying. You want someone to just tell you what to do, right? And we're not here to 
just tell you what to do. We're here to show you all of the options that you can find like within yourself right now and all of the options you have to seek out that community to help you to really achieve that life. So keep working on building that muscle one little moment at a time. Ah, oh, that feels so good to hear. And Jessica, you and I are just getting started on this oh my topic. Gosh. There's going to be a lot more here, you know, that we need to Woo! say about yes. this. In fact, it was near impossible for the two of us to figure out what to do for our one episode because we had 14 episodes <laughs> worth of notes and ideas and inspiration. So right. there's more. There's more where this came from. We ladies. know that we just unpacked a little bit for you all listening right now. Thank you. Because I'm sure you're like, but what about this and this and this? So like you're saying, maybe you tell us, what did we not cover? What did we not address that is so key about burnout? Because it's it's such a huge monumental issue, isn't it? Absolutely. So leave us a comment below and come join us in our Girlfriends After Hours. We are there for you. We love hanging out there. And there's so much more to be said. And we want to hear your voice. Maybe like actually hear your voice. Mm, yeah, so, record us a voice memo. Send us your thoughts about being burned out. We want to hear it. Absolutely. So till next time, girlfriends, thank you so much for being here with us. As always, we hope that this moved the needle for you. Let us know how, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye, girlfriend. Thank you for tuning in today to Girlfriends of a Certain Age podcast. Do you have a girlfriend who needs to hear this message? Share this episode with her. She will love you forever. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and comment wherever you get your podcasts. Stay tuned for more episodes where we discuss more hot topics about girlfriends living their best lives. You can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and girlfriendsofacertainage.com.